Hello, Marisa. Hi, how are you? Great, thank you for, uh, for doing this interview. So you've, you've, you've done a comment on uh, human versus artificial intelligence and commenting about Mahalo, the Jason Calacani search engine. So do you think humans will replace the uh, uh, machines at Google? Actually, I think what is likely to happen is that the best approach will combine automation and the work of humans. And so what we've relied largely on automation to date, I do think there may be some value in adding humans. That said, we are seeing trends where, for example, the semantic web work that happens by humans is actually something that can be approximated by using a lot of data. So when you do computations at scale, what you ultimately see is that the computer seems to understand things. So for example, it seems like it can understand that Survivor the TV show is on ABC, uh, or sorry, it's on CBS and not ABC, but it's really just because we have so much data. So, and talking about this so much data, you, you're, you said you are integrating blog search and videos and audio into the same universal search right. engine? So universal search is going to become the default on Google. And so with web search, you will not only get web search results, you'll get books, images, video, news, and local to start. And we certainly will be turning our attention to things like blogs and Google Scholar and some of the other uh, corpora that we have and try and understand how we can blend those into the results to provide a really rich search experience. How do you fix the video search? You, you said it's difficult because you need text, right? Right. So how do you, are, are, you, are you doing like indexing and text uh, generation automatic well, out of the videos? This is a big doing, challenge. What we're doing right now is relying largely on metadata and encouraging a lot of tagging, which as you know, people tag a lot of content on YouTube and tag a lot of content on Google Video. We're also investing in the longer term, not in the near term, the longer term for things like voice to text. Can we actually ah. extract text out of the out, out of a video and essentially create a transcript because the search works best uh, when we have a lot of data. So for some videos we actually have the closed captions or the equivalent of a script. You can imagine our search over that video is great. What's the last question, Marissa? I let you uh, 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 go then. But what's what's what do you think search will be like in ten years? Where well, you're talking about the long term. So you're, you have a vision. You're what I mean. One of the I think that there will be all kinds of different types of results blended together to provide the best answer, not the best 10 URLs. I think that we'll see people interacting in a whole new way with search. Maybe they'll be using it by voice on their phone. Um, maybe they'll be able to search across many languages. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later today. Uh, and so I think that there'll be all kinds of new modes of interaction that make it even easier to do searches as part of your everyday life. Globalization, you mean you're going to translate everything into several languages? Well, the idea is cross-language search. So you can type in a query in your native language and we'll search all possible wow. languages, bring those results back, and then translate them into your native language. So we can basically find a piece of information no matter what language it's written in. Which for you know English speaking countries and some of the European countries is not as big a deal, but for languages like Arabic, where less than one percent of the web is written in Arabic, this really would bring to Arabic speaking people a huge amount of knowledge that can't be found right now. Thank you, Marisa. Thanks.